Anybody can think Martin back to that? Martin Luther being a Catholic priest. Pardon me? Martin Luther being a Catholic priest. Martin Luther was a Catholic priest. In fact, a lot of the guys who became denominational leaders were coming out of the Catholic Church as priests. Okay, good. What else do you remember from last week? That Luther's desire was not to start another church, but to reform the Catholic Church. Good, good. He wanted to reform the church from within. And then he was kicked out and price on his head. <coughs> Anybody else? It was a, it, the restoration movement was able to start because it was came to the United States where there weren't, wasn't all of the hierarchy and all of the things already set up and you know, everything was already, you know, in Europe everything was already pretty much preordained and set in place to come to the United States where it was, you know, the Wild West, you know, they could do whatever they wanted. Uh, okay. Even on the East Coast. Yeah, so from the Reformation, Europe, and a lot of it a reaction to the Catholic Church and now that had devolved and now they're wanting to reform and now it's got to be something different because the Catholic Church did not want that reforming to happen on the inside. So there's that. There's also the Gutenberg Press that developed and now people could actually get Bibles instead of hand copied things that were chained to the pulpits and, and the rest of it. And that was a big deal as far as America. And so Ben has introduced the restoration movement, then was an American thing. All right, now there were some things in pockets going on in Europe as well, but it, it primarily was a, an American thing. Independent country, independent churches, there's this, that freedom from all that over in Europe. Now freedom from all this church hierarchy and the desire to get back to the Word of God. And by the time this happens and the United States, the Bibles, you can get Bibles now. You can actually have Bibles in your own home. So that was just huge, very huge. Anybody else from last week? Will? In our trips to Europe, we visited mm -hmm. many cathedrals over the years. And uh, what I found out, I did not realize, the reason their stained glass windows are there is because they did not have Bibles. And so it was a visual thing for the congregation to look at the different stories that would appear on the windows of the churches. That, that's the reason they had those there. I, I had never even thought of that. It's, okay. It was a pictorial message, I guess, yeah. about stories from the Bible. Yeah. So reminders, even as you look at the window of some of the Bible stories that we just, because they didn't have their own Bibles. So, yeah, key. Anybody else? All right. I, I think what, we, what we've just kind of brought out is the difference of Europe, Catholic Church, coming out of, all right? America, independent country, independent churches, not that hierarchy. And I, that's the real difference between the two. So you see in a lot of different preachers and a lot of different churches, a lot of different denominational settings, they're just saying, I don't want that tie back in Europe. We don't need this tie of a denominational setting. What we need is just to start being Christians according to the Bible. And so that was the birth of the Christian Church, Church of Christ movement here in America. And it became, and it literally is, is called a spiritual awakening in the 1800s here in America. And very well recognized millions of people came to Christ not to a particular church, but coming to Christ because of the Word of God. And so that, that spiritual awakening that happened here in America. <coughs> so the movement still has three original goals of truth, unity, and evangelism. The truth restoring the authority of the Word of God. Number one, you have to have something as a standard for truth, and that's God's Word. And then the unity, working together based on this truth, so as much as we can, provide that unity so that we can evangelize. With everybody so divided and everybody so protective of their own, there's not that evangelism that needs to happen. And so that was the third part, and we dare not forget that that is why 
So people were coming from Presbyterian, from Baptist, from Methodist, from all kinds of, and just saying, let's just be Christians, and let's work together so that the lost can be saved. And I think that's a huge message for today. I think America, by and large, has forgotten that there are people lost, dead in their sin, and on the day of judgment will be consigned to hell. That is a very real doctrine in the Bible, is it not? Mm -hmm. yes. And we need to stay focused on what our mission is. Our mission is not to tear down other churches. Our mission is to save the lost. And we do that as best we can, and so that becomes our focal point, okay? So, truth of the word, unity, so that we can save the lost. Um, is it still an ongoing movement today? And uh, I just want to read to you a couple of things that, that has happened in other countries that was just indigenous. It was just, it, it wasn't from an outside source. It was just themselves grabbing, understanding the restoration movement in Russia. I, I'm just going to read a portion of this. Here then were more than two million New Testament Christians arriving at an identical position. They had one thing in common, that was to restore the New Testament church using the Bible alone as their source of faith and practice. Nobody from the outside. They just ended up getting the Word of God, getting together as groups, and going, this is what God's Word says, let's do it. That's Russian, all right? And uh, I've got these papers. I'll have them printed off and, and uh, given to you next week. In Ghana, same thing happened. In May of 63, one of those who had received a Bible, somebody had requested a Bible, sent one over to them, wrote the Ark Valley Congregation to inform them that they had begun practicing the simple New Testament gospel and that many there we're ready to be baptized. Now what do we do? That kind of thing. Just simply innocent with the word of God and just saying, this is what we're finding. Since you guys have been in this a long time and we're just finding it, now what do we do? All right? So they sent over a couple of people to help them understand the scriptures better and, and shared with them, this is not a church baptism thing. This is relationship with Jesus Christ baptism. All right? So what you're finding is what we did. Go for it. I mean, that basically is what they were telling them. I had the same thing happen to me in Sunbury. There was a couple that came to me. They'd been worshiping with me for a little while, with us in Sunbury. Upon getting to know them, I realized that he didn't have much of a background at all. She had Jehovah's Witness background from her grandma. And so it wasn't real strong, but it was there. They were living together, unmarried, had two kids, and they started reading the Bible. And they're, they're, as they're reading the Bible, they're going, I don't think God wants us to do this. And they're finding it out on their own, okay? And they're going, and when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we need to be baptized into Christ. And they're finding this out on their own, just from reading the Bible. So I sat down and talked with them about that. Where's their heart? How about their repentance? You know, those kind of things. And they decided that, you know, we're just going to, a lot of people think we're married already. We're just going to go to a civil marriage. I'm fine with that. It didn't matter to me. And then they said, but we would like you to baptize us in Christ. They found it on their own. I didn't have to teach them anything. They just had a Bible and started reading it as an unmarried couple with two kids. So the same thing happened. If you just have the Bible, what what can you find? Okay, so, and this is what they were finding in Russia, in Ghana, and then the last example I have right here is from Chile. And uh, this one goes in 1962. They were quietly practicing a local autonomy of New Testament Christianity for several years under leadership of a retired employee of the National Airlines of Chile. <laughs> this guy becomes a Christian, okay? He's a retired airline employee, 
begins teaching people, they're not a part of any movement, a part of any anything. They read the Bible and they just start, you know, so you just find them growing and sharing Christ and it's an autonomous thing, all right? And then later, another group of three churches were found in the islands off the southern coast of Chile. Same thing. Same thing. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about in the 1800s. That's what we're talking about today. Just as simply as we can, let's take the Word of God as our source of truth. Let's provide unity as best we can so that the world will come to Christ. And that is it, in a nutshell, all right? If anybody asks you what the church is about, that ought to be it. That ought to be it. And then we can talk about more things in detail later, right? Because we're all going to be growing. Now, let me ask you this question. Most of you have been in Christ for quite a while, but you wouldn't be a leader. How many of you have changed your thoughts about a particular doctrine or teaching in the Bible since you were younger to when you are now. How many of you have changed your thought process about any teachings in the Bible since you were young? Yeah, you have? Yeah, I have, okay? It, to me, it, it's a matter of growth, maturity, and as I find it, I do it. Or as I find it, I let it go, because it's not that important. All right, and then maturity, that's what we do. No man, no church is perfect. We're all on a journey, and so we all ought to act like it. And what ticks me off probably as much as anything is that somebody that comes across so strong that he knows everything about everything and can learn nothing from anybody else. All right, and just one of our guys. I retired from ministry six years ago, and as I did, I was downsizing my library. And so I put my library out there for a group of preachers, probably about 15 guys out there. You can take what you want to, and guys are picking them out, picking them out, and the one guy passes it. One of our preachers passes it, and he goes, I wouldn't touch those filthy things for anything. I'm going, what? Because it wasn't written by a Church of Christ guy. I'm going, come on, are you serious? You're serious? You can't sift. You can't look for truth. You can't grow because of you can't exchange ideas from somebody else. I, I, would, I would do this with any preacher. If you listen. I do this with Jehovah's Witnesses. If they listen. Most of them just want to talk. But if they'll come in the door and we can exchange, if we can have a discussion, then I'm probably going to be challenged in some areas that I wasn't expecting. And they probably will be challenged in some areas they weren't expecting. My wife and I visited the state up north a couple of years back. And uh, up there as we were visiting, we were just having an enjoyable time together. And all of a sudden we were approached by these two young ladies who were Mormons. And I'll tell you what, the courage that they have to go out and do what they do, I respect that. All right? I do. And so I'm going, you know what? If anybody needs to engage them, it's me. I love this stuff. And so... So we sat there and we talked, and I got to learn a little bit about why they are and where they're coming from, but then they got to learn a little bit about their history they didn't know, about Joseph Smith, about some of the things that happened within. They're going, no, we didn't know that. We're going, you really ought to take a closer look at this, okay? So maybe through that discussion, we both learned a little bit of something. Even from a Mormon? Yeah. If we know what we believe, because we are Bible-based Christians, then we have something that probably somebody else can learn. And doggone it, if I can't learn from somebody else, then shame on me, right? Shame on me. If I think I'm all there. So be careful, guys. Be careful. That's not who we are. It's not who we should be. Let me put it that way. Let me go ahead and pass these uh, papers out. I have several... 